everyone, it's Maki here. Today I am going to discuss the content of the movie Gundam Seed Freedom, which contains spoilers. If you prefer to watch the movie without prior information, I recommend skipping this program. We'll analyze footage released in Japan, as well as images from the music video. World Peace Monitoring Organization Compass This is the organization to which the protagonist Kiro Yamamoto and his companions belong. Kira Shen and the new character Agnes, four mobile suit pilots, are of great interest to many. Many believe that Kiro Yamamoto has the highest skill level. That would be true. So how exactly does their difference in skill translate to the battlefield? This time, we want to analyze such elements. Welcome to the campus mobile suit pilot training program. After watching this program, you will be required to submit a tactical analysis report. Please press the subscribe button to begin analyzing the footage. Learn the skills of ace pilots and strive to become a better mobile suit pilot. In this analysis, we will exclude Luna Maria Hawk. This is not because her abilities are lacking but because the officially released footage does not contain many scenes of her in action. In the movie, Luna Maria successfully shoots down a nuclear missile and wins the fight against Agnes. This time, let's focus on the abilities of Kiroshin and Agnes. First, let's analyze Kiro's piloting skills. The chest beam cannon of the destroy Gundam fires at Kiro and his team. Rising Freedom dodges this attack by rotating its body in the air. The Freedom Gundam has a setting that allows it to perform complex maneuvers in the air by controlling each wing individually with a computer. It's safe to assume that Rising Freedom is equipped with the same functionality. Let's consider why it is necessary to rotate the body and follow complex trajectories by referring to another scene. It's a scene where an attack is carried out on a base, where Blue Cosmos is hiding. The attack of the destroyed Gundam is fired at the mobile suits. The Murasame's accompanying them also dodge the beams, as does Kirwa. However, the trajectory of the beam changes and one of the Murosames is destroyed. This scene shows why the beam of the destroyed Gunnam is so powerful. After firing, the beam changes angle to chase the enemy. This operation requires the pilot of the destroyed Gunnam to have extraordinary concentration and mental strength. In the real world of sports, there's an illegal act called doping that temporarily enhances human concentration and physical abilities. Of course, this is illegal and considered cheating. However, for Brew Cosmos, the use of enhanced humans, code extended is considered a legitimate act. Rising Freedom needs to rotate its body to analyze the trajectory of the beam. Murasame was unable to deal with the beam approaching from below and was destroyed. Let's go back to the opening battle scene of the movie. Shin Luna Maria and Agnes, who are fighting with Kira, also avoid beam attacks. This element helps to understand the difference in abilities between the ace unit that rushes into battle with only four people on the average pilot. Let's examine the fight scene with Blue Cosmos. Here we can analyze the fighting styles of Hiroshin and Agnes. Imodo just as descends from the sky and destroys the head of a 105 dagger. Although the moment when the beam rifle is fired is not shown, the Imodo just as lands the next moment, suggesting that the beam fired by Shin is very likely. She then destroys the enemy's shield with a beam saver emitted from the shield. He continues to attack, destroying the head. 
This style of fighting games to take away the enemy's ability to fight. In the next scene, Shin is seen approaching the enemy while blocking attacks with his shield. The activation of the beam saber on his left leg can be seen. The enemy's head is turned towards Imodo Justice's shield, hiding the beam saber. The next moment, Shin destroys the enemy's arm, taking away his means of attack. With a spinning motion, he brings the beam rifle close to the enemy's head and fires. Behind Shin, Agnes hits the cockpit of a 105 Dagger Directory with a beam rifle, avoiding the anti-beam shield. In terms of defeating the enemy with less energy, Agnes appears to be the superior pilot. Just before this battle began, during the strategy meeting, Mahumamiya stated that the loss of human life should be avoided as much as possible. In that sense, Shin's actions could be interpreted as more in line with the strategy commander's policy. Of course, since the phrase as much as possible is used, Agnes' actions are not against orders. How do you interpret this? Agnes fires the beam rifle after landing. Shin destroys the enemy's head with the beam rifle before landing. Shin is described as a pilot capable of performing multiple actions at once. Also, Immortal Justice's movements are very fast, taking about the same amount of time as Agnes takes to defeat the enemy. Shin's maneuvering is faster than Agnes's. I feel that Shin's piloting skills, which involve using multiple weapons and adapting their use to the enemy's situation to achieve his goals, are superior. Let's focus on the battle with Kira Yamato, like Shin and the others. He descends from the sky to launch an attack on the Blue Cosmos base. Keep an eye on Rising Freedom as he approaches the enemy. The separated shield flies close to Rising Freedom. Is there a pilot who can accurately identify both the fast approaching Rising Freedom and the shield? It happens in an instant. The Blue Cosmos pilots on the battlefield were unable to respond to Kiro's tactics. Kiro destroys the heads of two enemies in the back with a beam saber. At the same time, he rotates Rising Freedom to attack. This allows him to skip the movement of swinging the beam saber. The enemy's attention is focused on the flashy movements of Rising Freedom. While Kira is successfully attacking with the Beam Saber, the separated shield also destroys the heads of the enemies, and again only the heads are destroyed. Kira is not only spinning Rising Freedom, he uses the spinning motion to survey his surroundings. As soon as Kiro lands Rising Freedom, he immediately aims the beam rifle behind him. He uses the beam rifle to destroy an enemy that the beam saber attack missed. He destroys the head, of course. He then fires another shot with the beam rifle. Dust is raised and the surroundings cannot be seen with the naked eye. However, Kira, having understood his surroundings with the previous rotation, executes the shot immediately. The target destroyed by this attack is unclear. It is not visible to the viewer. It may have destroyed the weapon held by a destroyed 105 dagger. Or it could have destroyed a tank or other military hardware. In this scene, the shield also returns to Rising Freedom's hand. While making attacks, Kira also buys time for the shield to return. Watching these scenes, it seems clear that Kira is the most powerful pirate at this point, even more so than Shin. Agnes seems to lack combat experience compared to Shin. Of course, this is just my personal interpretation. 
Also, as explained in the Destiny Gundam Spec 2 program, Shin is fighting with his preferred tactic seared at this point. It's important to remember that this analysis is based solely on the results observed on this battlefield. At the beginning of the movie, Agnes impressively defeats her enemies in a very extravagant manner. In the scene where she attacks the blue cosmos base, she destroys the cockpit with a single blow. The use of a beam saves her emitted from her shield and attacks from her chest beam cannon seem overly showy. Of course, this element could be intended to excite the audience. However, Agnes is proud of the title Valkyria of Moonlight and believes in her own worth. It is important for her to demonstrate her achievements through extravagant fights. It could be said that the direction of the production team and Agnes' character are in perfect harmony in the scene. Does this mean that Agnes' skills as a pilot are not very high? Not at all. In the novel version, there are some descriptions that help us understand Agnes' abilities. This is seen through the actions of Shure Serpentine. Shure studies the combat techniques of mobile suits and powerful pilots using video footage to improve his own skills. After such experiences, he concludes that Aslanzar is the strongest. Shure holds Agnes in high esteem. First, at the party scene, Shure invites Agnes to dance in a composition similar to Orphe's invitation to Lars. Shure tells Agnes the strong are beautiful. Shure, who has done extensive research on strong mobile suit pilots, holds Agnes in high regard. This scene alone could be interpreted as an act to smooth in the relationship with the compass. However, after Foundation betrays Compass, a conversation between Shur and Agnes is shown again. Agnes panics after betraying Kira and attacking him. Attacking allies is a serious violation of orders, which can result in severe punishment. Then Shur appears and says, Will you come with me? Agnes replies, I will go with you, and leaves Compass. This scene is depicted with the same lines as when Shara Envoy invited Quest Power in Counter-Attack of the Shar. The novel version describes Shara's feelings in the scene. She's a somewhat good pilot. It would be a shame to lose her here. While not outright praise, it shows that Shara, who is in charge of commanding the Black Knight squad, holds Agnes in reasonably high esteem. Let's analyze the battle with Destroy Gundam Last. It follows a scene released in a promotional video. Shin separates the shield and throws a beam boomerang. Immediately after that, Rising Freedom appears in front of him and separates his shield. The shields of Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice are equipped with powerful propulsion device, so there's no need to swing them too far. Therefore, Kira separates the shield with very small movements. On the other hand, Shin separates the shield with larger movements. The difference between the two pilots' fighting styles is shown here. In the Gundam series, there are occasional scenes where the character of a pilot is revealed by analyzing the movements of his mobile suit. It can be understood that Shin's emotions are more easily reflected in his piloting. Let's also pay some attention to the scene where Destroy Gundam is defeated. It pays homage to a battle scene from Metal Armor Dragona, as fans know Mitsuo Fukuda, the director of the Seed series, was involved in this work as a collaborator. Kunio Okawara, who designed Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice, also participated as a designer. The moment when Destroy Gundam is defeated is the same as in Dragona. It parallels the scene where the protagonist came Wakaba and his rival Mayo Prado work together to defeat a giant enemy. 
In the previous work Sea Destiny, Hera and Shinra are often portrayed as rivals. This scene pays homage not only to the style of battle, but also to the relationships between the characters. In the Gundam series, the personalities of the characters are reflected even in the way the mobile suits fight. Paying attention to these elements can make watching a very enjoyable experience. See you in the next program!